um, the German CML study group is doing treatment optimized, randomized treatment optimization studies since 35 years. And we have been continuously in various randomized studies been trying to improve survival with CML. And CML study 4, that means a treatment optimization study with imatinib, is the last one in the series of these trials. And how did it work out? Well, it was full of surprises. The first surprise was that although doubling the dose of imatinib resulted in faster and earlier responses, after 10 years there was no survival difference. And the second surprise was that um, currently the causes of death are more frequently due to other causes and patients with CML rarely, only in 5% of cases, die of CML. So what that means is that currently what you need to manage CML patients is more the expertise of a good general internist than that of a hematologist. A life of living with cancer, managing cancer, rather than the death sentence it was. Well, you know, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't put it on that line. Uh, because with C CML, we, we, we are not really living with cancer. You don't notice anything and you might just as well be cured without knowing. Because um, you can stop um, imatinib treatment in about half of the cases and there's no relapse. Yeah, this is now <clears throat> a very hot topic actually and also at this Congress a variety of presentations on treatment-free remissions that means stop tyrosine kinase inhibitors are discussed and presented. Let us ask for the other groups who are assessing imatinib 400 versus 800 versus the other drugs as well. Well, you know, none of these arms provided a uh, survival advantage. And only imatinib 800, doubling the dose, provided a faster response similar to second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So these results um, of a no uh, survival advantage over imatinib 400 is not really new because we had data like that published last year with second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors. It was only five years, but they did, did, did not detect any survival difference between imatinib and second generation TKI, although also there the responses were much earlier and faster with second generation TKI. So that means that the response, time to response, is not a surrogate marker for survival. I mean, that was the assumption, you know, that you, that faster response, earlier response indicates a survival advantage. We all thought this is, this is so, but it is not. Well, so we all were deceived. <laughs> well, if 10-year survival is no difference, are we just chasing quicker responses now? Is that where research is heading? I think we, w what we learned from that is that quicker responses are not meaningful for a better survival. And I think the reason probably is that survival with imatinib at 400 milligram is so good at 83% after 10 years. That means if you do a relative survival, that means if you compare the survival of these CML patients with that of the general population, you end up with a survival of something like 94% relative survival. That means if you then add up these 5% that still die of CML, you know, that makes pretty much the 100%. That means there is no option anymore to improve survival with CML unless you really cut down on the progression rate of CML and on the progression to glass crisis. If you do that, then you may be better. But we have examples on that, like for instance with ponatinib. You know, that, that uh, um, um, treats blast crisis and uh, also treats uh, very resistant mutations. Um, uh, but there you have the adverse effects. So patients die of vascular problems. 
So that means, you know, there it starts to become, yeah, well, a deal between Scylla, Scylla and Charybdis, if you know, you know, this, this example. You either die of blast crisis or you die of uh, vascular side effects. So, you know, this is really a difficult situation right now, but, you know, the baseline is that imatinib is such a good drug. You know, I proposed at an educational at ASCO recently that actually Novartis should get the Nobel Prize for this <laughs> this wonderful drug. I'm sure they'd be very happy to have it. Yeah, well, you know, like probably they don't give Nobel Prizes to companies. Yeah, well. but this is this is really something. You know, I'm I'm not aware of any other drug in cancer treatment with such a high efficiency and such a low adverse effects rate. Well, I mean, I would ask where can we go from there, but it seems like, like you say, you've effectively got a cure. For the time being, we are there.